We're going to be looking at simplifying radicals, which should be a review topic, but we need to come back to it because in order to solve quadratics by taking the square root, we have to be able to simplify a square root or radical. So remember that if we take the square root of x squared, it's just equal to x. So when we take the square root, we're trying to figure out what times what is that number. So we'll look at a few easy examples first. So for example, if I want to find the square root of 25, it's just 5 because 5 squared is 25. Another one, if we want to find the square root of 81, it's 9 and that's because 9 squared is 81. And the last kind of easy one is the square root of 144 would be 12, and that's because 12 squared is 144. So all three of these were easy because there's something called perfect squares. So it's where we have a whole number times itself is equal to that number. So unfortunately, not all of them will be this easy, um, and you should remember we had to do something called, the fancy way of saying it is prime factorization which means um, the tree. So I'm sure you guys all recognize that. So that's going to be coming back in this next section. So we're going to review that. So looking at the square root of 48. So unfortunately, there is no integer that multiplies by itself to become this 48. We know that it must be close to 7 because we know the square root of 49 is 7. Um, so what we have to do is branch. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways. So prime factorization, you're, you want to end up with only prime numbers. So for example, I'm going to say 2 times 24. 2 is prime, so I could leave it alone. Then I branch 24. 2 times 12. 2 is prime, so I leave it alone. 2 times 6. 2 is prime, but 6 is not and then two times three. So I end up with two and three, which are both prime numbers. Remember, a prime number is a number whose factors are itself and one, okay? So then we look for pairs. So I have a pair of twos, a pair of twos, and a lonely three. So we would take the pair of twos times the other pair of twos, and then the three stays in the radical, okay? So we would get 4 root 3. Now, that time I did 2 times something, 2 times something, but you don't necessarily have to do that. So you can just think like, okay, what number times it's times another number is 48? So I might have thought of 6 times 8, which is 48, but those are both not prime numbers, so we have to keep going. So I would want to branch 6. So what numbers um, multiply to get 6? 2 and 3. So that branch is done because 2 and 3 are both prime numbers. Now we could do 8. Well, we know that 2 times 4 is 8, but that branch is not done because 4 is not a prime number, so then we have to keep going. So we get 2 and 2. So looking at the prime numbers, we have 2, 3, 2, and 2, and 2. So we look for pairs. So I have a pair of 2s, a pair of 2s, and a lonely 3. So you end up getting the same thing, 4 root 3. All right, let's take a look at one more example of that. So we have the square root of 200. So again, I'm going to use my 2 method. So the reason I do this is because I know that 2 is always prime. So I'm always thinking, what's the smallest number? So then 2 and 50, then 2 and 25. Now 2 does not go into 25, so the only other factors we know are 5 and 5. So again, all of these are prime numbers. So I'm looking for pairs. So I have a pair of 2s, a pair of 5s, and then a lonely 2. So I take that pair of 2 times the pair of 5s, and then the lonely 2, and I get 10 root 2. Okay, so let's again look at what if you didn't come up with those same factors. So maybe you thought, okay, I know that 4 times 50 is 200. 
Well, both of those are not prime, so we have to keep going till we get prime numbers. So 4, 2, and 1. Or sorry, 2 and 2. So that one's done. Now let's think 50. I might have thought 10 times 5 is 50. 5 is prime, so we're good there, but 10 is not, so we have to keep going. 2 times 5. All right, then we end up with all prime numbers, and then again we have a pair of 2s, a pair of 5s, and a lonely 2, so we get 10 root 2. The last thing I want to go over is something that's called rationalizing the denominator. So we will have to do this if we have a radical divided by a radical. So we did this before again, but um, we're just revisiting it. So to rationalize the denominator, the reason why we have to do that is because we can't have a radical in the denominator, so we must get rid of it. So for example, if I have the square root of seven over six, I can think of that as the square root of seven divided by the square root of six. And then I would want to get rid of that root 6 in the denominator. So to do that, you multiply both the top and the bottom by root 6. So this would end up being root 42 over 6. And then you want to ask, well, can we go further with 42? Well, I know like 2 times 21 is 42. 2 is prime, so we're good there. 21, I know 3 times 7. And then I end up getting three prime numbers, so that means that I am done. So it would just be root 42 over 6. Last example, if I have the square root of 8 over 5, so I'm going to make this radical 8 divided by radical 5. And then again, we want to get rid of that root 5 in the denominator, so I'm multiplying by root 5 times root 5. So we get root 40 on the top, and then we get five on the bottom and then 40 looks like we can branch some more so maybe you do four times ten and four is not prime so we could do two and two and then for ten we could do two and five so we end up getting these four prime numbers so we have a pair of twos and then a lonely two and lonely five so we would have the 2, and then you multiply those lonely numbers and get 10 all over 5. Keep in mind, I can't reduce the 10 over 5 because those are unlike terms. That is it.